Greetings subscribers and other curious persons, and welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is how do you deal with books that have been spoiled for you? Well, my first thought was, but what spoils a book for me? As I've mentioned before, I like books for more than one reason. I like books because they're well written. The prose is poetic, lyrical, clever, amusing, whatever. Secondly, for the ideas, there's something about the world or the characters that's intriguing that I want to see play out. That doesn't necessarily have to be written brilliantly because the story is interesting. Thirdly, there's the plausibility of it, as it were. Is this story real? Does it speak to me on an emotional, on a human level? So, to take for example, A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich. It's a translation, and I don't speak Russian, because I don't speak Russian. And so, I'm never going to get the lyricism of the original. But the story of a man in a concentration camp has a resonance to it. It's something that is inherently a different perspective on the world from mine. So that perspective can be interesting, even if I'm not getting Pasternak's original words. And even if the idea isn't something that's that new and innovative. So there's something that speaks to me in that, but obviously I know a lot about what The concentration camps were like from history lessons. So to an extent that's spoiled for me because I know what sort of story it's going to be but because I'm reading it for the perspective rather than for the surprises it isn't spoiled for me even if someone has already told me what living in a concentration camp is like. Similarly if someone told me whether or not he survives to the end. Again, it's the journey and not the ending that makes that book interesting. So that wouldn't spoil it for me. So some books, knowing the plot doesn't matter, which is why there are some books that I, and I suspect most people will read more than once. There's, even if your memory isn't perfect in every aspect, if you read a book a second time, you know what's going on, at least roughly. So to an extent, you're rereading, you've spoiled it for yourself, but you still do it. Now, where spoilers become slightly more relevant are in things where the premise, the thing around which the book is primarily based, is a surprise. Take, for instance, a crime novel. Most of those, the purpose of the book, as it were, to the extent that entertainment has a purpose, is to find out who done it. So you're reading in the attempt to unravel the mystery faster than the detectives, or to be surprised by who it turns out to be, and then with hindsight go, oh yes, of course, that makes sense. I missed the clue in chapter three, whatever. So those can be spoiled more easily, but there are some mystery novels, Agatha Christie and so on, that I've read several times because I like the mystery, but also I like the way the characters approach the mystery. Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple 
are very different characters. The way they approach a mystery is very different. The little touches in how they go about it, it works as an interesting character piece, even if you already know what's going to happen, at least in a rough sense. So again, it hitting on more than one thread means it's hard to spoil those for me. <clears throat> so where books are spoilable is where the book is about the surprise, about the how it comes out. So one where there's an interesting world, but the world is interesting because gravity switches off for half an hour on Wednesday real world but gravity switches off for half an hour on Wednesday everyone knows exactly when it's happened and someone sets out to find out why and that's the book and someone tells you oh yeah they discover there's a switch on an island controlled by a polar bear that book suddenly loses a lot of its interest if People just cope with the gravity switching off. They're so used to it that there isn't any plot, any challenge in it to get your teeth into and think, well, this is interesting, because your viewpoint characters don't find it interesting. So none of that interest comes through. And if the search isn't an interesting character piece, knowing the ending means... Why bother? So... Books can be spoiled for me if the thing I'm told is the interesting, exciting, engaging bit of the book and there aren't other things about the book. So to an extent, it would have to be a book that was less engaging to me before it was spoiled where potentially I'd be reading it just to find out what was going to happen, rather than because I cared about the characters for themselves or found the world interesting for itself. And when it comes to how often books get spoiled for me, very rarely, because as I've mentioned before, I don't chase the latest bestsellers. I probably have a reasonable idea how the girl on the train and gone girl end well enough that if i put some effort into recalling it i could potentially get which ending was which the right way around but as i wasn't driven to go out and read either of them anyway happening across the ending didn't spoil it for me because i wasn't going to read it so again spoilers only affect me if it's a book i'm likely to read anyway and to take it into the psychology and meta level of writing there are only a limited number of plots and a limited number of human reactions anyway so on a certain level, every single book has already been spoiled by the fact that it contains, if it's a book that you don't put down and go, well, that just doesn't make sense, characters who act the way you expect human beings to act, following a course that is one of a very few courses. So for almost any book, you've got a rough idea how it's going to end. And take a detective thriller. The detective is going to investigate something. He's going to encounter some obstacles, some red herrings, and at the end, either he's going to get his man, woman, cat, whatever it was that did the murder, or he's going to fail. But if he's going to get his murderer, then you discover things along the way 
that feel like they're moving towards a finding, and he's the right sort of character for doing that kind of thing. He's the kind of person who will track them down and then will do something when you find them. Or he's going to fail, in which case the story will have markers in it to indicate that he's being set up to fail. He's not going to fail out of the blue because fiction readers in general don't like everything's continuing along to a particular way and then suddenly a random event happens which changes things and the protagonist doesn't have an impact. So for every book, the more books you've read, the more familiar you are with, on an unconscious level, the way stories unravel, the more likely you are to be able to predict whether the ending of the book is going to be the detective gets the criminal, the detective fails to get the criminal, or the detective discovers the criminal but does something different from what they're supposed to do. The policeman who lets the criminal go because they find they agree with why the criminal did it. But in that case, there will have been hints prior to indicate that the detective is the kind of person who will put personal ethics ahead of social role. So, at a certain level, are there any books that are capable of being spoiled in the sense that you start reading them with no idea of what's going to happen and then someone tells you what's going to happen and it comes as a total surprise to you. To an extent, the more you read, the more likely you are to unconsciously spoil your own books. But I'm drifting again to the realms of metaphysics, so I'll leave it there. Toodaloo!